welcome to this lecture on algebraic geometry and counted algebra in the last lecture we have studied the ideal structure in the localization of a ring so um let me recall briefly what we studied so uh a is a our ring commutative always and s is, is a multiplicatively closed subset of a that means one is there one belong to s and whenever two elements are in s their product is also in s all right and then we have using this multiplicatively closed set we have constructed a new ring s inverse a which is called ring of fractions of a where elements of s have now become uh, invertible elements and also we have constructed a ring homomorphism from a to s inverse a and this we have denoted by iota suffix x upper a but i am going to abbreviate this for iota whenever uh, s is fixed and a is fixed so this is a ring homomorphism and then we were comparing the sets ideals of a and ideals of s inverse a and what we did was we define a map here that map is also let us call it s inverse only for each ideal a we have defined this s inverse a s inverse a this is by definition all those a fractions a by s such that a varies in the ideal a and s varies in the subset s and we have checked that this is indeed an ideal in s inverse a in fact it is the ideal this is the ideal generated by the image of of a under iota and we have noted that if a is a don't intersect with s then this is a proper ideal and also we have we have a natural map in the other direction namely the iota inverse this is any ideal b in s inverse a we can always pull back to ideal in a that is simply iota inverse of b and this is ideal in a and we have also noted that this correspondence become better when you study prime ideals so what we did was uh, we have this spectrum prime spectrum of s inverse a this and we have a prime spectrum of a and among them we have taken all those prime ideals in a which don't intersect with s then there is a bijection here and the bijection is this coming from this uh, maps s inverse and iota inverse this bijection is also this uh, earlier maps are all these maps are inclusion preserving all the maps are inclusion preserving that means whenever a is contained in a prime then uh, s inverse a will be contained in s inverse of a prime all right so this is what we did last time this bijection you can uh, any p here any p here goes to s inverse p and we have proved this map is surjective and therefore we can define a map on the other direction that s inverse p goes to iota inverse of 
S inverse P and this map is this is equal to P. That means, this S inverse and iota inverse these maps are inverses of each other. All right. So, this is what we did. Now, I want to deduce some consequences of this. Okay. So, the first one that is I will call it corollary 1. All right. So, uh, let us fix a prime ideal. Let P be a prime ideal in the ring and let us take S equal to the complement of P. Then obviously, this is multiplicatively close. That is the definition of prime ideal. In fact, the other way is also true if complement of an ideal is multiplicatively close that means that ideal should be a prime ideal this is almost a definition okay then the s inverse of the ring a this we denoted by a suffix p and also it is called uh, uh, localization at p of A at P is what we call it and then this ring is this ring this ring is called Oh, it is a localization at P. This ring is a local ring, is a local ring with unique maximal ideal S inverse of P and this is also denoted by P A P which is by definition all those elements P upon S fraction P upon S. So, where P varies in the ideal P and S varies in the multiplicative set S alright. Uh, so, uh, let us prove this. So, note that if I have an ideal So, note that if I have an ideal A in A, then in this case because A is a complement of P, A intersection S is empty if and only if A is contained in the complement, A is contained in P. This is very clear because AC is the complement of P. Therefore, PAP is the only maximal ideal. So, this is SPM of A localized at P. So, that proves the assertion that it is local and uh, PAP is the only maximal ideal. So, that is the statement. So, uh, now what we have done? So, this corollary has uh, good implications. So, that means, whenever I have a ring A, whenever for a given ring A, we have defined a map from speak A to a collection of local rings.
any p goes to p a p a uh, a p a localized at p this is a local ring and whenever you have a local ring we have seen in the earlier lectures there is a unique maximal ideal and therefore there is a unique uh, residue class field that is precisely p a a localized at p modulo the maximal ideal p a p and we have this natural residue class map and one can check this is the, in fact the quotient field of the integral domain a mod p this is the quotient field this equality you should check so for each prime ideal we want to understand a local ring and that will give you the local information when we uh, go back to study of topology that is topology so this we will take up after we have finished this um, section on the localization of rings and modules. So, next corollary, corollary 3. So, let A be a ring and as you will see this course will send uh, structured to study the spectrum of a ring and various aspects of the uh, spectrum of the ring properties geometry etc and therefore many times we will make a statements about the spectrum so then every minimal prime ideal in A is contained in Z A, where Z A is by definition the set of all 0 divisors in A. Proof? Okay, before I uh, start the proof formally, I would like to make a comment uh, about this minimal prime ideal. I want to make a comment about minimal prime ideal. That is, uh, by definition, by definition minimal prime ideal means minimal elements minimal prime ideal in a means a minimal element element in the ordered set spec A and with the natural inclusion. This is ordered, ordered set and minimal elements means that is minimal with respect to the inclusion. Whether do they exist or not that is a question and we will prove at the end of this lecture that minimal elements in the order set spec k with inclusion exist, but we do not know right now they are finitely many or how many and when we will prove later that when the ring is Noetherian, the set of minimal prime ideals in a ring is a finite set. This is very useful and this minimal prime ideals will correspond to some irreducible components in a Zariski topology of the spectrum of the ring A. All right. So, right now our definition of minimal prime ideal is it is the definition that it is precisely the minimal element or minimal element in the spectrum. 
and we want to prove that this p. So, let p be a minimal p in spec a be a minimal prime ideal in a then to show p is contained in the set of 0 divisors of a. All right, and as um, we are writing it as a corollary to the localization ideal structure of the localization, that means we have to use, we need to use somewhere localization. So, look at, so consider the local ring A localized at P. Remember, this is S inverse of A, where S is the complement of P, and this is a local ring, and the maximal ideal is PAP, PAP precisely is the only maximal ideal is PM of AP. This is noted in the earlier corollary. Okay, and it is minimal, and then we know that there is a one to one correspondence between the prime ideals which which do not intersect with the multiplicative set S and the original ring. So, therefore, because this P is minimal there cannot be anybody who is contained in properly contained in, in the ideal P. Therefore, all prime ideals will have to intersect with S. Therefore, that shows that this maximal spectrum is also equal to the spectrum that is the only prime ideal. This is by structure of prime ideals in S inverse A, but then um, because only one prime ideal that is this. So, therefore, what is the nil radical of the local ring? Nil radical of A localized at P will precisely be that P A P. That means, every element in this ideal is nil potent. So, take any element A by 1 for example, this that is we started with an element. So, we sh so where A is in P, A is arbitrary element in P and I want to show that this A belong to 0 divisors of A, this is what we want to show and we consider for that we consider A by 1, A by 1 is in P by A P by definition and therefore, it is nil potent. So, choose because of this, because of this equality. choose n in n least with a by 1 power n is 0. That is, this is 0 means there exists an element T in S with there exists an element T in S such that such that T times A by A power N is 0. But we know that, but we know because we have chosen n least so that a by 1 power n minus 1 is not 0 in a localized at p. That means t times 
a power n minus 1 this is non zero and this equation will then tell you t times a power n minus 1 times a which is t a power n which is 0. So, that means, this element a is killed by this element which is non zero. So, that is a is a zero divisor. So, that proves the statement. Now, the next one before I define the next one I want to uh, before I continue I want to define definition a ring A is called reduce if the nil radical of A is 0 that is there is no non-zero nil potent element in A. So, by the earlier characterization that also means that we know that we have proved that nil radical of A is the intersection of all those P. So, that P in spec A. So, this is 0 that means the ring is reduced. All right. Uh, if your ring is reduced, then I want to prove. So next corollary that is corollary three. Let A be a reduced ring. Then the union of minimal primes where p belongs to min spec a this is precisely the zero device of the ring a remember that we proved in earlier corollary that every every element every minimal element is an element in a minimal every minimal prime ideal is contained in the zero divisors that is what we proved but here so therefore by that this inclusion is clear this inclusion is clear this is by earlier corollary by corollary 3 2 3 or 2 i don't know what is it let me check that is 3 so, this is 4, this corollary is 4. So, this is by corollary 3. And see, we have so we have to prove the other inclusion. So, proof for the other inclusion. So, proof. So, I am going to prove that. So, we shall prove that if A is not in the union where P is a minimal prime in the spectrum, then A cannot be a zero divisor. This is what we will prove. So it's a like a negation, uh, contra uh, contra positive. All right. So um, so let us take a not in the minimum uh, minimum uh, union of the min of uh, spec a, and suppose so suppose on the contrary
that a belong to 0 divisor. That means, a times b is 0 for b in a, b in non 0. Now, we should get a contradiction. So, then note that a b uh, a is not in the union means a is not in any one of them by assumption a does not belong to p for every p in mean spec a, but a b which is 0 these belong to p for every p in fact in particular for the mean, but then if a product belong to a prime ideal then one of them belongs, but a cannot belong therefore, b has to belong. So, therefore, b belongs to p for every minimal for every p mean spec a, but then b will belong to the intersection of mean p, p belong to mean spec a, but this means this is contained in p, p belong to spec a. In fact, it is equality here, because of minimal prime ideal every prime ideal will contain one minimal therefore, the intersection will be equal, but this is nothing but this is nothing but the nil radical of a, but a is reduced therefore, nil radical a is 0 since a is reduced. So, that proves b is 0 that is a contradiction to b non 0. So, a contradiction to b non 0. So, this proves that intersection a uh, un uh, z a 0 devices of a must be the union of p where p varies in mean spec a. All right, so that proves this corollary 4. Now, I want to prove uh, theorem which is so this theorem, this is very important theorem actually we have proved we have not proved uh, this, but we have proved directly that there are prime ideals by proving there are maximal ideals and every maximal ideal is prime ideal. Therefore, uh, that was precisely the content of the cruel theorem, but this is directly proving that there is always a prime ideal. So, this theorem is also one can say it is existence of prime ideals as, and we will prove this as an application of the localization. All right, so let A be a ring and and S containing A be a multiplicative closed set. For example, we could take S equal to singleton 1. Of course, we are assuming here note that we are assuming A is non-zero ring. 
okay so um, and a be an ideal in a with which don't intersect with s a intersection a is empty but that means that a is contained in the complement of s with these assumptions the set m of all those ideals b in a such that a is contained in b which is also contained in a minus s the set m which is a subset of ideals of a has maximal elements with respect to the inclusion moreover moreover these maximal elements the maximal elements in m r prime ideals in a in particular spec of a is non empty a note that this also proves uh, the fact that spectrum of a is non empty so this is little bit more general than the krull theorem but um, uh, this doesn't assure you that there are maximal ideals anyway but krull theorem shows that there are maximal ideals and therefore prime ideals so let us prove this this is as one can guess this is a simple application of zorn's lemma so i have to i have to justify that i can apply zorn's lemma proof we want to apply zorn's lemma to the ordered set m with inclusion first of all note that m is non empty since the ideal a belongs to m and all ideals which belong to m they don't intersect with s by definition of m and to apply zorn's lemma we need to check that this is this set is inductively ordered that means we need to check that every chain in this set m has an upper bound then we can conclude by zorn's lemma that m has maximal element so let c be a chain c containing m b a chain in m and consider and consider a b which is the union of b which is union of all b b tilde let us call it b tilde which is union of all b in b varies in the chain c and this is b tilde and i will show you that this b tilde is an upper bound for c in m all right so so we need to check that uh, b below b tilde so we need to prove that 
B tilde belongs to belongs to M and B tilde is an upper bound. Clearly, this B tilde is an upper bound for C by definition of B tilde because B tilde contains every ideal in the chain C. Uh, now, to prove that B tilde belongs to the set M, we have to prove two things, namely uh, this B tilde. So, we we need to prove that B tilde intersection A C is empty, empty. But this follows from the fact that uh, B tilde is the union of all B's, B in C, and each B. So when you intersect B tilde with S, this is same as union B intersection S, B varies in C. But each one of this is empty. Therefore, this is empty set. So, we, we know that we proved this. Second thing we need to prove that that A is contained in B tilde. But again because this is clear since A is contained in B for every B in M. In particular for every B in C and B tilde is a union of all those B, B in C therefore, this is also clear. So, we proved that a chain uh, the given chain has an upper bound in M therefore, by Zahn's lemma it has M has maximal elements. Okay, so, with this uh, we still have to prove that the uh, next part that uh, these maximal elements in M are prime ideals. These I will prove after the break. So, uh, thank you and we will, will continue the proof after the break. Thank you.